Hey, what is up, everybody? I'm here to give you guys my uh, update video for the uh, WWE Mae Young Classics uh, coming up. Uh, this is going to be the sixth video in this series. Still can't believe how many of these I've done. Uh, like I've talked about before, every time I think I'm done making them, they, uh, you know, this, the uh, WWE keeps coming out with more and more updates. Um, but I'm thinking that this probably will be the last one because I couldn't imagine they're going to do anything more because we got the uh, Raptology coming up uh, this Sunday after SummerSlam. So uh, I don't think there's going to be really a whole lot more uh, to update. I think this will be the final update video for the Bayon Classics. And then we have Raptology and then we have the tournament that's actually starting up on August 28th. So, um, yeah, I don't. I think this is going to be the final one, hopefully. Uh, but we'll have to wait and see on that. Um, I got some, uh, you know, um, updates on competitors and stuff. And I'm going to uh, watch the videos that they've uh, released for it. And then come on. Um, and uh, as I watch each video, I'm going to uh, uh, talk about uh, the topic that they talk about in the video. So now that I've uh, discussed that, uh, let me just uh, get right into uh, this update video. Okay, so uh, before I uh, go on, I want to mention I'm going to leave the links to all this stuff, the videos and articles uh, down in the description box below. So that way you guys can watch it as I'm going through it. And we have um, the first video, it's called Inside Zeta's Inspiring Journey to the Mae Young Classic. Um, she pretty, this is pretty much uh, exactly what the video says it is. Uh, you know, Rosetta talks about how she uh, was an MMA fighter uh, for a while. She talks about how when she was younger, she had huge um, social anxiety, and she was always nervous uh, to do certain things. She was also bullied and beat up a lot uh, when she was younger, and that when she, uh, you know, uh, went into uh, MMA, she talked about, you know, how she uh, it gave her confidence and uh, it made her feel safe, even though I think you would feel safe if you can kick somebody's head off. So um, and to talk about how she really gained that confidence when she won her uh, first tournament. And um, she talks about how um, she didn't think that she would accomplish everything, beat an MMA and MMA is going to made her feel confident, made her feel like that she could accomplish something. And she talks about, you know, how. Uh, she never was the most athletic person, but MMA broke her out of that. And then um, she talks about how uh, she moved to uh, LA for um, a few years ago. And when she first was there, since it was really expensive, her first year there, she ended up sleeping in her car and she got like a gym membership. So that way she could shower all the time, which I thought was a unique story. And uh, she talks about, you know, uh, how everything's been a battle for her and the May Young Classics is going to be the exact same thing. And she said that she's going to feel satisfied because she feels like she deserves to win the Mae Young Classics. And um, then she talks, says that it's an inspiration that she made it because it shows that no matter what you do, you can always make it uh, through anything. And that was pretty much the whole video. Very enjoyable video. Really enjoyed her story. And yeah, can't wait to see what she has to bring to the table um, in the Mae Young Classics on August 28th. Okay, so next we have the video is how substance hunting taught Sarah Logan to be a survivor. Uh, pretty much this was a uh, uh, get into the uh, Mayon classics. Um, she talks about pretty much says that her grandmother is the reason that why she is a uh, wrestling fan because uh, they would watch Raw every Monday night. Um, and that would be the only time she would actually hear her grandmother curse, which was uh, kind of funny. Um, and then um, they would, would like rent horror movies and then they would go to wrestling shows on Wednesdays. And she said that instantly she knew that she wanted to be a wrestler. So after she graduated high school, she went to uh, Japan because she liked that style of wrestling. And she's tr trained in the Japan, um, I think it's called... Um, dojo with Takamichinoku, which was pretty interesting and you know she talks about how she 
Uh, at first, it was really green, but then she eventually grew to be a, a great professional wrestler. And then she talks about kind of her life, about why she's more prepared than the other woman in the Neon Classics. And, um, is because um, she's had to prepare her entire life because she always had to go out and hunt for food uh, because they weren't getting any of the government uh, milk or uh, meals or family. So she pretty much had to always uh, fight for her meals. Um, and, uh, you know, she says that she's been asking the girls how to start a fire or where the exits were, and none of them are prepared for it. And she said that she's prepared for the Mayon Classics. Um, I thought she had a pretty decent story. Uh, she talks very fast, though. Um, but, yeah, i uh seen Sarah Logan wrestle some matches in NXT, and it seems like she's a pretty decent talent, so we're going to have to wait and see uh, how she uh, fares in the Mayon Classics on August 8th. On August 28th. Okay, so next we had the video. Um, Scottish Daredevil Kaylee Way isn't afraid to take a risk. Pretty much this is an interview that somebody from uh, WWE.com asked if she's ever afraid. And pretty much the title of the video says it all. That She says that she is afraid, but she says that uh, she doesn't have the same amount of fear as everybody else does. That she loves jumping off, um, you know... Um, high buildings and stuff and she says that it just gives her an adrenaline rush so um i kind of hope we can see some uh, nice uh daredevil stuff and ha nice high flying stuff from kaylee way i'm kind of looking forward to, to see what she has to bring to the table um and the mayon classics on august 28th okay so we had the next video it was um May on Classics Dakota Kai isn't your typical next girl next door. Um, yeah, she should uh, go see that person from the girl next door movie then. I forget her name off the top of my head. If you've seen that movie, you know what I'm talking about. Because um, she ain't your typical girl next door either. <laughs> but anyhow, um, um, she's from New Zealand. And I guess not a, people, not a lot of people know about New Zealand. They because it's how small it is. So she talks about how she's happy to travel the world and represent her country to get it well known. And then she talks about how she isn't your typical next door, um, how she's um, like the girl next door who's very sweet, but once she gets into the ring, she's very quick. She talks about, you know, uh, how um, her mom was Samoan and she finds out all, all, all of these, pretty much the Samoan family, we know the names, I'm not gonna mention it. Um, so she said that since they're all in wrestling and they're making um, headlines, she said that it was just meant to be for her to become a uh, wrestler. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if uh, her mom's in that Samoan family, considering how big it is, though. Um, and she talks about how her parents have been her big inspiration, and she said that she's ready to kick butt when um, in the Mayan Classics. And let's find out if she'll do just that on August 28th. Okay, so next uh, video is the international competitors break new ground in Mayan Classic. This is pretty much all the international competitors, except that New Japan girl they have. Um, and um, they pretty much give their thoughts about what it's like for them to be in the Mayan Classics. Uh, Kavita Devi talks about how she's honored because she's the first Indian woman uh, to be competing um, in WWE. Um, and she says that, and then as the, each of them talk, they break into their own language and then somebody talks over them, um, and translates it to us. Um, and, uh, she talks about, you know, how much of an honor that it is for her to be in, uh, the Mayon Classics and, um, how she's going to bring, um, uh, pride to her country. And then, uh, Trivia Conti, um, I think that's how you say that. Um, says that, uh, you know, she talks about how she's honored to be representing Brazil, considering the fact that wrestling um, isn't as big as it in Brazil, um, and it's not very popular, so she feels like she's going to do her country proud when she steps into the, the ring. But she talks about how she misses her family and thinks about her all the time, and gets a little bit emotional. Then Pritza Sujit uh, talks about how she's happy to represent Mexico and, and uh, is going to show the world why, why Mexico is the best place to find women's wrestling. And then Modi Bell talks about how um, 
she wants to do a country proud as well because she wants to um, show everybody that it is um, easy to um, accomplish things. Um, when, because she, when she first came here, she was struggling to learn English. And she says that fans will want to be like me when I um, come into the Mayan Classics. And I think that was uh, pretty much the last post. And um, overall, very well done. I thought this was some uh, good stuff here uh, that we found out. Okay, so next, uh, we had a video talking about how a WWE trial changed Nicole Savoy's. Probably don't know how you say that, but whatever. But it talks about how it changed her life. Uh, pretty much, we find out that she's from Sacramento, California. And she came in to do a tryout for uh, WWE. Um, and, and she talks about how, uh, you know, how uh, the whole process goes. And there's this spot. If you've watched Breaking Ground, you've seen it. Where the competitors bounce off the ropes. It's all four of them. And then they, like, stop and get into, like, a fighting stance. Um, and she went to do that. But then she ended up... Uh, Talent, um, you know, her, she felt like her knee pop out, but she tried to tough through it, uh, but she just couldn't. So then she went to the doctor and she found out that she uh, had a torn it, um, MCL, um, which she had to, uh, which she had gotten when she was in the mil military ten years prior to that. And um, she talked about how devastated she was, uh, but just said that she was determined to get back. Um, to the WWE and not the, 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 let this injury hold her back. She would go to physical therapy. She would stay longer. She would uh, come back the next day when she wasn't even scheduled to come back for a week. And then eventually um, she talks about how she got the call to be a part of the Mayon Classics. It just said that she's a little bit concerned uh, because of her knee and stuff. But she said that she is going to use that determination to win the Mayon Classic. So I think she has a really good story. And I kind of can't wait to see... Uh, you know, what she has to bring to the table um, in the Mayon Classics in August on August 28th. I kind of want them to do the spot where, uh, like they did with Sid Vicious and Scott Steiner, where she trips off the top rope and hit, um, hits um, the big boot with uh, her leg, and it just pops out of place, just like uh, Sid Vicious is, um, just like Psycho Sid's did. Um, if that doesn't happen, then her match is a huge disappointment. Okay, so next we had um, a video for Candice LeRae. It's actually called, I didn't forgot, I scrolled down to off the title. It's called Meet the Woman Who Went Toe-to-Toe -to -toe with Kevin Owens. And obviously everyone knows Candice LeRae because she's been all over the world with the indie scene. She talks about, you know, how uh, where she's from and stuff. I don't really remember that. But she talks about, you know, how she got into wrestling because um, she has two brothers and like all male cousins. She doesn't, she never grew up with really any woman. So she wanted to fit in with anybody. So she, they all watch wrestling. She started, um, you know, uh, she watched it when she was six years old and fell in love with it ever since then. Um, and then she became a wrestler. She's wrestled for 14 years and she's, you know, uh, does puts a body on the line to win matches. And she talks about how uh, she finally got her first opportunity when uh, she got to wrestle matches where no one else would wrestle. And she talks about how she's been in the ring with Tommy Dreamer, Kevin Owens, Witch Swan, and Cedric Alexander. And she talks about, you know, how um, she's also married to uh, Johnny Gargano. And a lot, she, she doesn't want people to think that she got this job uh, because her husband is got her the job. I don't know who the fuck's thinking that, but whatever. And she just wants people to have fun watching her matches, and she hopes to win the Mae Young Classics. Um, can't wait to see what she has to bring to the table. And uh, if Kevin Owens doesn't screw out of the tournament, uh, then it wasn't meant to be. I, 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 that would actually be pretty, be, uh, pretty cool, actually. Well, Tommaso Ciampa screws her out of the tournament, because uh, can you imagine how pissed Johnny Gargano would be if Tommaso Ciampa uh, cost his wife uh, a chance to win the Mayon Classic, that'd actually be pretty cool. But it's probably not going to happen. Um, so, yeah. Okay, so next it plays a video reminding you, uh, this is the title of it, the Mayon Classics premieres August 28th on WWE Network. So make sure you guys, on August 28th, check out the Mayon Classics. Okay, so next then is an article. Um, it's called... Uh, the Mayon Classic 
bracket will be revealed this Sunday after SummerSlam. Um, and this was this is presented by Rocket League, and I don't know exactly when this article was shared because it doesn't say, so I'm sorry about that. The Mae Young Classic is almost here, but before the tournament gets underway on Monday, August 28th, be sure to tune into in the WWE Network this Sunday for your chance to see the official tournament bracket. Hosted by Corey Graves and WWE Hall of Fame leader, the Mae Young Classic Bractology Special will feature an in-depth breakdown of first-round matches, competitor profiles, and interviews, plus appearances by special guests Triple H and Alundra Blaze. The Bractology Special will stream exclusively on WWE Network this Sunday immediately following the biggest event of the summer, SummerSlam. An encore presentation will also stream Monday on WWE Network following Raw. Featuring 32 women from around the globe, the inaugural May Young Classic Tournament kicks off Monday, August 28th, when the first four episodes will be released in the um, VOD section on the um, award-winning WWE Network. For more coverage of the May Young Classic, included in Superstar Bios, click here. And I did find out that this article was published on August 15th, 2016. By WWE.com staff. So yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, it's going to be exciting to see uh, Triple H. We haven't seen him since WrestleMania 33. We'll be excited to see Alunda Blaze have a part in this. And she was kind of, you know, uh, the first woman's champion when they revitalized the the old woman's uh, championship uh, in like 19, uh, I think 93, I think it was. So it'll be nice to see uh, her make an appearance. Um and yeah, I'm looking forward to uh, watching uh, the Mayon Bractology uh, this Sunday after SummerSlam, which will help set up the uh, Mayon Classics uh, premiere on August 28th. Okay, so uh, next we had a video. It's called Bruising Berliner Jazzy Gaber Likes to Pick Up Opponents and Throw Them Down. Wow, that's kind of a stereotype. Uh... <laughs> Title, but whatever. Um, and it pretty much talks about her career going into the Mayon Classics, how she uh, competed all over the indie circuit for years, uh, and then eventually in 2016, um, she uh, went into did MMA because she had interest in that, and she was the best fighter. And she talked about how her wrestling is strictly strong style, which if she goes up to the main WWE roster, isn't going to go over well. Just take a look at how fucking Shinsuke Nakamura was treated when he was supposed to up there, um, just saying, um, it won't get referenced, because Shinsuke Nakamura is an artist, man, he's the artist known as Shinsuke Nakamura, fuck that shit, but anyhow, then she talks about, like, how wrestling, uh, helps her fit in, because she doesn't fit in very well, and she talks about, you know, about her physique, physique and stuff, people would make fun of it, and how, um, women's wrestling's gone so far, because when she's wrestled other places, women would only get one match on the card, and they would all have to struggle to fight for that one match, uh, but now she's they're getting a whole tournament that's built around them, and he talks about she talks about how much of an honor is that that is for her. So yeah, um, hopefully she's improved because when I saw her wrestle in uh, what's now uh, what was known then as uh, TNA Impact Wrestling, uh, she wasn't very good. So hopefully she's improved since then. But we'll have to wait and see. I really hope so though. All right, so uh, we have the last video. It's called. Maya Yim is ready to achieve her dream inside a WWE win. She talks about, you know, how uh, she's been a wrestling fan for a long time. She watched all of her favorites, Lita, China. Um, and she talks about how the one that really made her want to be a wrestler was Gail Kim. She thought, um, since she's also from South Korea and stuff, and she gave her that inspiration to actually want to be a, a wrestler. And she talks about, you know, how when she met Gail Kim... It was a huge inspiration for her. Um, but they can't say where they met Gil Kim because they met her in that company they don't like to talk about, which I think is kind of funny. Um, and then um, then eventually she talks about, you know, how she's worked so hard to get this opportunity. She, when she found out she was going to be in the Mae Young Classic, she was overwhelmed with joy. And she says that even though um, that she's already won, even if she doesn't win the tournament, she's already won because she's achieving her WWE dream. Uh, so that was pretty much it. Um, I kind of can't wait to see Maya Yim. It's been a while since I've seen her wrestle. I saw her wrestle as Jade in TNA, uh, what was called Impact Wrestling then. But obviously, um, 
I really, that was when I really wasn't watching TNA that much, so I really can't say. I think she just mainly jobbed out because she was in that dollhouse faction with Molly Bell, so you really didn't get to see a whole lot um, of Awoke. I didn't really get to see a whole lot of Awoke, so uh, yeah. So hopefully I can see I can see something more from her in the Mayon Classics. And that's pretty much uh, the whole video. Um, I don't think there's any more updates that I know of. Um, so this is probably going to be the last one, um, hopefully ever. Hopefully the WWE will just save everything else and just leave it to the Bractology because there's really no need to do more any more updates. But knowing the WWE, they love their articles and stuff, so we'll have to wait and see on that. Um, I can't wait to watch the Bractology. I'm not going to watch it after SummerSlam because I'm, I'm going to be overwhelmed after watching SummerSlam. Who the fuck wants to sit there and watch um like seven fucking hours of a SummerSlam and then watch um you know that afterwards? Like what the hell? Why didn't they just air this after? Oh wait, but they can't air it after. Why didn't they just air it like Tuesday, Wednesday after NXT? You know, people are already going to be on the network. Like I guess like because after SummerSlam, people are just going to be burnt out watching it. But anyhow, it's um, a topic for a different day. Uh, but I can't wait to watch it. Like I said, not going to watch it after SummerSlam. I'll probably watch it uh, Monday um, morning before I go to work. So, uh, yeah, that's pretty much it, guys. Uh, thank you guys for watching this video. Uh, please make sure you guys uh, like, comment, and share this video so that way people will watch it. Make sure you guys subscribe to this channel for more content and click on the bell so that way every time you upload a video, you guys will get the notifications for it. Make sure you guys do the same for my Owen the Talkinator and CM Brothers YouTube channels. Uh, make sure you subscribe to those YouTube channels. Click on the bell so that way every time I upload a video on those channels, you guys will get a notification for it. And that's pretty much it, guys. Talk to you later.